Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. Okay, we are back with part four of our Let's Play and Review of Wander, the Cult of Barnacle Bay. And if you remember last time, our two heroes, Ross and Tank, they successfully traversed the underground waterways, found a ladder, took the ladder up, and have now found themselves within the... Uh, the confines of the city proper. Here is the first, their first view of Barnacle Bay. I'm sure it was a breath of fresh air for them getting out of those uh, waterways. They probably stank like brine and mildew. And this is one of the examples I was talking about earlier, just about how good the art is in this game. The tiles do a very good job of depicting Barnacle Bay, depicting the um, the setting as a real place, and I greatly admire that. Uh, here we have like a little house, and then around it are these nice little laid out um, flower beds and vegetable gardens. We have gates and shovels and piles of wood. It doesn't feel like it's just random art. It really does evoke a sense of space and a sense of time. A little well here and kind of like a city square up here. And so in this scenario, this encounter of this scenario, we need to get to this end token here. But that end token is blocked off by some magical gates. And we, <clears throat> excuse me, we need to find the keys. Now this is one um, part about this scenario that it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. The objective says to find three keys in the three objective darkness tiles. And that's gonna be those there. However, in the special rules, it says that a hero holding any objective token, which is a key, close to the gate may spend an action to use the objective token to unlock the gate. So the special rules make it sound like you only need one key, but the objectives make it sound like you need all three keys to open the gates. So I'm not quite sure which takes precedent because both are true according to one, the objective, or two, the special rules. So uh, it's not like we're not going to finish the objectives today, but maybe someone can chime in on what they did for this scenario. But anyways, the first thing we need to do is, is we need to set up our objective, our darkness tiles, according to the map. So we're going to take our three um, objective darkness tiles, and those are going to represent the keys. And we're going to mix those in with four regular. So one, two, three, four. And so we're going to mix these in. And so we should have a total of seven. Whenever we have to do this kind of setup, it always, always makes me a little bit nervous to do it right. Because, uh, you know, if you're playing with a group and you do it wrong and you make it so this scenario is not winnable, <laughs> but you never realize until it's too late. Um, that was always a big, big stressor of mine with the first edition, first edition of Mansions of Madness. That setup was an absolute bear and tons of places for mistakes that would absolutely render the scenario like completely unwinnable. So anyway, so we're going to mix these up and we need to find the three red ones while we're playing. So we're going to put one here. One's going to go at the entrance to the house. One's going to go over here off the corner of the garden. And then we're going to have one here by the um, by the well. We're going to have one here at the corner of the uh, town square. Another one in this little park area. And then finally one here. So as we're playing, we're going to be going and we're going to be searching these areas again, looking for the keys. And then we also have here, we have a health token that we can pick up, which Tank should probably think about getting that for sure. And then we have our spawn points scattered about. And so the next thing we need to do is we do need to spawn some enemies. We already have one brute and one caster. And the way you spawn enemies is you spawn one card per hero and per large tile. So we're gonna be looking at one, two, three, four spawn cards. We're gonna have, a, there's gonna be quite a few enemies out. And remember we are at uh, level two. We're spawning at spawn level two. 
All right, so we will draw four here. One, two, three, four. And let's start here. We're gonna start at the spawn token closest to the heroes and then go around in a clockwise order. So the first thing we're gonna do is one guard and two grunts. So the guards I actually have not fought yet. That's these totally gnarly, like looking at rat, turtle, crustacean, shield monsters there. They're like the ultimate tanks. So let's see, let me find my grunts. So that's one guard, two grunts. Alrighty. And then let's see, next up we have one brute. And then clockwise, that brute is gonna appear over there. So oh man, we have two brutes out on the board. Okay, next up we're gonna have one caster and two grunts. And those are gonna go there. So one caster and two grunts. And remember, we have to, uh, we have, we don't, I don't believe we have to kill everything. I will double check on that. Um, because we are not, we are not having to interact with a ladder but I'm not, I can't quite remember if we have to kill everything to interact with an end token. Um, I don't think so, because all this says is reach the end token. We don't have to interact with it. So we can actually win this scenario without having to kill everything. So that might be something we look into doing if it's at all possible. All right, but next up we have our final, our final spawn card and it's gonna be Ooch. Ouch, ouch, <laughs> ouch. Two casters. And those casters are gonna be hanging out here in the house guarding that uh, that potion. So I will verify that whether or not we have to uh, kill everything in order to win. All right, so that was our four spawns. Now we need to set up our initiative track. So let's see here. Do we have a guard? Yes. We have a casters. We don't have a mega yet. We don't have any crablings. Uh, we don't have any archers. We don't have any boomers. We do have some grunts and we do have some brutes. So, okay, that was, uh, that's our initiative cards. And then we're gonna take our hero initiative cards and we're gonna shuffle all of these together and then lay out our initiative track. Let's see what we get here. All right, here we go. And number one, the grunts. Okay, we got number two here, the guard. Number three here is the casters. Four here is the brute. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. And then tank coming in at the end there. And uh, Ross taking up the final spot. That is an absolutely, uh, yeah, I am not happy with that at all. Let's see, where's my, my brute? Is here. I really want to try to get my brute down to this last spot here. Because I would really like the Brutes to not have anything but extra movement for their turn. So, all right. Well, that is the setup. And now remember, we're trying to find the three keys and escape with our lives. So right off the bat, we have to go to the initiative track. And it looks like the Grunts are up next. So I have two Grunts here. I believe that... Let's see. So... From, cent from the back of the square to back of the square, it does pass through the darkness. So according to my detailed calculations, these grunts are not active yet. Nothing in this square is active yet until I make a move here or here. So next we have the guard. So the guard there, he's not gonna be active. Okay, the casters, none of the casters have line of sight to the heroes, so we're good there. None of the brutes have line of sight to the heroes. So we are kind of in a little safe zone right now, but not for long. All right, it's Tank's turn. 
I really want to get Tank up to the top. So I'm going to have him uh, push forward. What was that called? What is it called when you go up? Um, step up. He's going to step up. And so I can forfeit my turn to step up to the top of the initiative track or fall back to the bottom. Because I really want to get Tank up to the top to where he can guard better. So we're going to move him all the way to the top here and we're going to drop all of these guys down. Except I may not be able to have him stay there for long. Oh, I can't do that though until... Okay, you can't do that action until enemies are engaged. So you can't just like manipulate the um, initiative track while you're safe. Forgot about that. Good thing I remembered. Because that would have... Um, that would have changed a lot. Okay, so let me take a look at these guards here. How powerful are they? Uh, level two, uh, we're at uh, we're level one guards. They uh, they have a lot of health. They do block two, and they only deal one. But let's see, blocks clear shot, and it's a target priority in its space. Okay, so they will block line of sight for any ranged attacks, and force close heroes to attack it so basically we have to we have to take out that guard first he's going to be standing in front of these grunts taking all the attacks until he is uh until he is dead there so let's see we have tank does have his extra attack die because of his initiative position so maybe we should just go ahead and move him up and have him attack that tank there he does have three actions, and I put some dice here just so I could keep track of how many actions that each of the heroes have, because I was I was kind of like losing track, I think, a little bit. So um, for his first point of action, we will have him move, and he can move up to two. So he's going to move one, two. So now these enemies are engaged. I don't think anything else is engaged. Those are good. All right, so we're good there. As soon as we reveal this tile here though, these and the casters do have range. They are going to become engaged. So we wanna think about how we want to move around this board and manipulate the enemies, hopefully to our advantage. But anyhow, all right, so for his second action tank it's going to be tank versus tank here uh, tank is going to try to uh, use his hammer to smash the head of this guard here so he has three attack dice plus he has his one for his initiative tracks we're looking at four and we want crits or axes and there are three axes i don't have any attack rerolls uh, I have a defense reroll. Yeah, no attack reroll. So that's three. And the, let's see, the uh, guard has two block, two uh, shields. So he takes one damage. And then for Tank's final action, he's going to do the same thing. He's going to try to attack that guard. And oh my God, look at that. <laughs> three ranged terrible okay but he does have one success maybe i can keep this thing popping one success and one success that was dreadful not a very good start tank all right so now we're up to ross ross gets a free movement action because of his spot on the initiative track so i think he is just going to move here and then he's going to uh, go ahead and throw his throwing axes here at the uh, at the guard. He's going to get three dice, and he does have a um, he does have a reroll. Oh, but maybe he should move up in order to give Tank his um, his defense reroll for his ability. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and move up because Tank will be taking the hits because he is first in the initiative or he's at five and Ross is at six. So, all right, come on, Ross. Let's see that uh, magic with the throwing axes. Oh my God. Complete miss. So that was his first action. His second action, same thing. There's two, but 
the guard blocks it all. And his final action. Man, okay, this might be the end of uh, Rasa Tank here. <laughs> uh, oh, he does have he does have a uh, he does have a uh, range reroll. But I kind of screwed that up. But let's see, maybe we'll get lucky. There's one, but yeah, nothing. Okay, I should have done that on the second roll, but I forgot about that. So we will keep playing. And then let's see. All right, so that was Ross's turn. Now we're back up to the top of the initiative and we have the grunts are going. And now we do have two grunts that are active here and they are both going, they don't need to move because they're already in close range. So they are both going to attack and it's gonna be tank. And what are they at? They have an extra, they have extra um, defense for being first in the initiative. All right. So let's see, they are going to be doing one attack each. So that's gonna be two damage to um, Tank here. And let's see, Tank is gonna have, what was that, five dice for his defense. And then he has two defense rerolls. So all I need to block, I need to block two. And I did not block a single thing, but I have two rerolls. All right, I blocked one. Jeez, my dice rolling skills are heavily lacking. So I'm gonna trade this in for a two. So Tank only has two health left. Okay, so now we're up to the guard. Now the guard is going to attack Tank. And the guard only has, he only has one attack. So he's not too powerful. Should be able to uh, defend this with tank. All right, looking for one block here. And there we go, we've got our blocks. And then we do get two rerolls. So I'm gonna try to reroll because I wanna try to get a crit. Which, did I get a crit on the last? No, I did not. I wanna try to get a crit so I can do some damage. Nope, but I do get another block, so that's three blocks. And then next we're at the brutes. This brute, None, neither of the brutes have line of sight, so they're not going to be engaged. Or the casters were next. The, and the casters are still blinded or still not in range or line of sight, so very good. The brutes, all right, so now we're back to tank. And I think we're just going to keep fighting away. There's a little war of attrition here. Um, all right, so tank, he's going to have three attacks. And he's going to add an extra die, so I will have four. Did I forget to do that last time? I might have. All right, so because he gets that extra die because of his uh, position here. So he's actually going to be rolling four. And I'm looking for axes or crits. Come on. Two axes. I have no attack rerolls. That's not going to be enough to get through the guard's defense. For my second action, I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, there we go, finally, geez, all right. So one, two, three, four so far, plus three re-rolls. Oh man, come on. And all three ranged, what? Oh, my God. All right, well there's four hits and the guard blocks two, so that's gonna be three. So that's gonna take him up to four. He needs one more hit to be killed. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. Four dice here. Boom, one, two, three, four, and a reroll. Five hits. Uh, let's see, five hits. There were nothing else, no cleave that I forgot about. I might've forgot about Ross's cleave on the last turn. Need to remember all of these little keywords. However, that was enough to kill this guard smashes his head in with a hammer and um, let's see tank is actually going to get 2 XP so tank is up to 11 or 10 and then Ross actually goes up 2 because one of his buddies went up to the next tier so Ross is now at uh, 6 Tank is at 10, which he's at the next tier, which means I need to do a spawn, 
which I'm gonna have to do two spawn cards. Oh my God. Okay, so things ramp up really quickly here. So we got two cards here off the top of the spawn deck and let's see, two archers and two grunts. Holy crap, okay, so two archers are gonna be going in here. And they, now this space has four models in it. That means it's a full space. No more models can be moved into this space. And I believe that that space now blocks line of sight. I will double check on that. But we still have to also spawn two grunts. And since we don't have the room there, we have to spawn them in a tile that is adjacent at our discretion. So I'm actually going to, um, I'm gonna put the two more grunts right here. And then let's see, next up we have two casters and those guys are gonna go over there, which that space is now full because the brutes count as two. So we're gonna have our two casters appearing here. And then we also need to add our initiative card for the casters and that's that are, that's going to be added to initiative spot seven so let's see here we almost have a full complement of enemies out on the board uh, <laughs> this is a crazy predicament that i'm in right now so finally we're going to go to ross's turn here and oh man he just really needs to take care of, uh, <laughs> of some enemies here. Oh, we need to pick Tank's next ability. He has Golem Grip, can ready two-handed items in one hand. Okay, that doesn't really help him right now. Or hold the line. Well, at the top of the initiative track, he gains another defense. So how we gain two defense at the top of the initiative track? I might want to do that. I'm gonna hold off. I'm not quite sure which one I want yet. But I probably, should, I'll pick before his next turn, okay? All right, so Ross is gonna go. Ross has three actions. He has a free movement action, but he's not going to move. And so I think think what he's going to do is, is he's just going to chuck his throwing axes probably all three times so I get three dice and one reroll and I'm going to go for I'm going to go for the oh we do need to take off let's see who did we kill we killed a guard and that was our only guard so actually that guard card is going to come off at spot two and everything else is going to move up so now Tank is at four, Ross is at five, and the Archers are at six. Okay, so now we're gonna do at three, and let's see, Ross actually gets an extra die now for his attacks for being at spot five. That works out really nicely. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and attack, uh, I'm gonna attack the Archers because I kinda like the spots where I'm at now in the initiative track. All right, so four. I'm looking for range. There's one, and I have one range reroll. All right, that is a one to the archers, and the archers have, they have zero defense. So this archer is going to take one. And then how much health do they have? They have two health. So that was Ross's first turn. Okay, his second attack here, gonna be four dice. And there we go, there's two hits and two re-rolls. Oh, four hits, nice. So that archer is easily dead. If only I had something that I could pass damage on to, some kind of overkill attack, but I don't. All right, and for his final attack, he's gonna do the same thing at the other archer. And there's one hit and a re-roll. Come on, ah, damn it. Well, that archer now has one. So now we're gonna to go to the archer's turn. Luckily we killed one of them. So that archer is going to take an attack and it's gonna be at, uh, it's gonna be at tank there because tank is at spot four in the initiative track. The archer does one damage 
Tank has a defense of five with two rerolls. And I block with a crit. That's good. And then we'll reroll. And okay, so one block, so I block it and I do a crit. And because of his first ability, I can do a damage. Now, this is something that I did in the last turn because rules as written, it clearly states that my vicious counter, one wound to a close attacking enemy. So this enemy is close and it attacked. However, according to Tristan, who talked to the designer, you can't pass on a crit damage to a ranged attacker, even though they are close. That's a little weird to me, but um, I, so because that was a um, archer, we actually can't use his ability to crit the damage. I don't like that because I thematically, like I would say like tank parried the arrow and it flew back into the archer's face. So I'm going to play like that because I think it works thematically and it does, although, mm, no, we won't, we won't. I will play like that when I play with my group. Uh, <laughs> if that makes sense to me. We will try to play uh, true in this video here. Uh, that way nobody complains too much. But all right, so that was it. I think that's gonna be it for tonight. Um, there is a whole hell of a lot going on in this uh in this uh scenario right now this is going to be a tight one i think i did not expect this many enemies and we really need some better uh some better gear i think but all right well i hope you guys are enjoying this playthrough as much as i am i'm really digging this game every time i'm not playing about it I'm thinking, oh man, I should go, I should go play another session because it's, it's, I really want to see what happens next and get to at least through one boss fight. So, all right guys, well, have a good night and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.